started around the Ganges River in what's now India and Bangladesh. Cholera was primarily a local problem until colonialism and global trade really took off in the 1800s. Ships carried infected merchants and soldiers from port to port. Cholera could take hold in any area without proper sanitation and clean drinking water, which back then was pretty much the whole world. A series of global pandemics swept the world, and they're not done yet. So one of the things that, that happened at the, one of the United Nations compounds was uh, an improper uh, disposal of, of waste, uh, where either the latrines um, uh, overflowed or there was leakage um, or improper disposal of the, the sewage, which then contaminated uh, a local river, uh, which was right upstream from uh, one of the refugee camps of the internally displaced people, uh, and then caused uh, the cholera outbreak. The UN is, is there to fight disease and to fight poverty, but it's a major contributor to disease and poverty in Haiti and refusing to take responsibility for that. Sudan also accuses the United Nations of a cover-up, saying that it willfully delayed investigation into the outbreak and obscured the discovery of the outbreak source. The UN says it does not discuss in public claims filed against the organization. Brian. Nancy Snyderman, just back from Port-au-Prince. Thank you for your reporting. So in a matter of days, you might have 10 people infected, then 100 people, then 500 people. One person in five will get severe diarrhea. Without quick treatment, up to half of those people might die. Now, the majority of infected people might have some symptoms, but they may be mild symptoms and they may not even realize that they have cholera and that their feces can spread the bacteria to others. Those people may not take adequate precautions and they may feel well enough to travel, which can spread the infection to other communities. In Haiti, the infection began in one province, and in just over a month, it spread to every province in the country. 